Hello and welcome, PML fans. I am your host, Edmund Joe here, and with me I have Will Kaufman, coach of the New York Licks. Hey, what's up? Pokeberm is the uh, is the YouTube handle. My uh, <laughs> my viewers who might watch this are going to be confused if you say Will. Will Kaufman is no one to them. Oh, okay. So it's okay. No, it's totally fine. Well, we have Berm here, coach of the yes. New York Licks. <laughs> How are you, Joe? I'm doing great, Berm. How are you doing today? Good. I'm doing well. Excited to be here. All righty, man. Well, that means we can start off with our first question. What made you want to join a draft league? Oh, man. Draft leagues are how I got interested in uh, the the YouTube world of Pokemon, honestly. Um, my first uh, Pokemon YouTube account that I subscribed to was, I don't know, it'd probably be like six or seven years ago now, uh, to PokeAim when he was back doing the, uh, what was that original uh, YouTube league called? The UL, UCL? UCL, something like that? yeah. Yeah, and so I, I watched him doing the Bronx Bear Ticks. I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. I followed, you know, all of the le- co- the, the coaches in that league at that point, and uh, truly that is how I got into, like, really wanting to do, like, competitive Pokemon. At, at that point in time, I didn't know where to find draft leagues or anything like that. I've since done a draft league or two, uh, but none of it public, really just with friends, uh, and so I'm very excited to finally have a little bit of a YouTube presence to be able to be part of like a recorded season it's going to be really really cool oh yeah man and um it's funny you mentioned pokeam because one of the coaches we have is actually friends with him so we do have pokeam's attention kind of so whoa it's pretty cool that you mentioned that <laughs> nice yeah i mean he's a fellow new yorker so uh it's uh, yeah i mean he, he what was his team name it was the the bronx bear Ticks or something yes I, I'm the New York Licks, so as far as I'm concerned, we're <laughs> rival teams. <laughs> yeah, that'd be, <laughs> that'd be an game. interesting combination there. Yeah, I don't want to battle him, by the way. That would not be a, a pretty sight. <laughs> yeah, I've watched him in the GBA. That's the one I really got into. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. he's ago. great. He's really great. I mean, as far as like top-notch Pokemon YouTubers go, he's got to be in like the Mount Rushmore for me. Yeah, I've heard a lot of people really like him. I actually started watching uh, A Drive back then, and A Drive is great too. He I really is. That guy. And uh, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I watched his playthroughs no. and I noticed he did that, and that's what drew me into competitive battle as well. Yeah, no, A Drive. Uh, it is it is incredibly impressive how much content that guy pumps out. He is like. He does every single kind of Pokemon video. He's a shiny hunter. He's a playthrough guy. He's a competitive guy. Like, it is really impressive how much he uh, just grinds. Yeah, he's committed. He's a good one, too, yeah. And it's fun that, like, real uh, competitive players are, like, doing YouTube now. You know, I mean, it's not... Wolfie and, like, Cybertron have had channels for a while, but it really felt like this year they really, like, started to, like, Step it pay... Up. Yeah, like pay real attention to like doing the YouTube stuff and it's only better for the community. Like like you can just tell that so many more people are interested in competitive Pokemon in this generation. Yeah, and uh, he's been doing stuff with Pokeam as well, I believe. Or, oh yeah, no. They all collab with each other. It's the coolest thing. It really is. Even though like Wolfie was started as a doubles guy and Pokeam like is started as a singles guy, like they've both done both things. So it's it's very interesting. Yeah. And that brings me to my next question. Um, what drew you to PML Draft? Ooh, um, honestly, uh, it was uh, Glauber and Devin. They were early subscribers of mine when I really didn't have a whole ton of support. They tuned into my streams I was doing on YouTube at the time and were always super nice. We've talked on Twitter. Uh, you know, we've, we've talked about trying to collab, and uh, this is ultimately going to be the first time that we get to do that. Um, yeah, they're just re- they've always been really nice. I don't know them too too well, uh, but I'm excited to get to know them a little bit better in this league because they they have two different teams in this league, correct? Yes, uh, Globber is coaching the Prowlers and uh, Devin is coaching the Raichus. So they're playing, yeah they're competing separately. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so uh, they are they are how I heard about this, and they're the ones who like reached out to me uh, to jump into the season. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to get to play against them, but also to meet everybody. All the coaches seem really nice. 
Oh yeah, uh, and I got lucky finding Devin and Globber in uh, the Pokemon YouTuber page on Facebook because that's that's uh, that's how I found them. Oh, cool. So, luckily, he, they got us you and uh, Izzy <laughs> to fill in for the yeah. drop. Yeah, Izzy seems really nice too, and it's also it's cool that I'm not the only uh, <laughs> the only replacement coach. I'm yeah. glad there's somebody else who's like kind of like jumping in like I am. Oh yeah, it's always good. <laughs> All right, now, you didn't get to draft your team, but you kind of got to pick the Pokemon you wanted in those spots. What do you hope to accomplish with your team strategically this season? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, there's, like, a there's a benefit and a, um, like, obviously the negative of not getting to draft is that you don't get your first choices, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the positive is that you get to look at all the Pokemon that are left over, and you might get to see uh what things could work synergy wise um mostly what i was excited to see is that uh is that nobody took dragapult that's that was my round one pick um i really value versatility in draft league so anybody who can um you know hit physically and specially uh and a pokemon like dragapult that's so fast and has such a great offensive typing like that is like the exact kind of Pokemon that I want as like the captain of my team that'll probably come to every game. Mm-hmm. Um, other than that, uh, there are a bunch of Pokemon that I've used in draft leagues before. Um, that uh, I, I'm just excited to get to use. Like Rotom Frost is a Pokemon that I've used a lot in draft league before. Uh, <laughs> It's usually like a pretty low tiered Pokemon because it's not that great competitively, and yet in draft league, I think it works really well against. The, it's got you know Blizzard's got some pretty nice type coverage, um, and it's fa- it's just as fast as any Rotom. You know, it is a Rotom, mm-hmm. uh, so it's really nice as like a low tier pick. Um, and additionally, I've used Klefki and Crocodile a lot too, and I grabbed uh, I grabbed my old my my channel mascot. Licky Licky is not well. Licky Tongue's <laughs> my channel mascot, but Licky Licky. Uh, is a Pokemon that I definitely wanted to try and grab uh, if I could. And it turned out, I forget what it, exactly it was, but there was a Pokemon that I tried to draft that somebody else had, and then I realized, oh my god, I never grabbed Licky Licky, so I'm excited to try and get Licky Licky to work too. Yeah, it was Zatu. And, uh, it was Zatu, yeah. Devin had it. <laughs> oh, perfect, yeah, of course. The guy that I just talked about uh, uh, having a good relationship with, suddenly he is already sniping me in, in the draft. Uh, no, it's okay. I'm I'm more than happy to take Licky Licky over Zatu if that's a uh, if that's the case. Oh yeah, I've actually used Licky Licky in a doubles uh, format, and that was pretty fun because he's pretty that's bulky cool. and he can uh, boost up pretty well. Yeah, he's got two different uh, abilities there. He's got um, yeah, I don't ha- see. I don't have any weather on my team, which is fine. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't have everything on your team. But what's nice about Licky Licky is got it's got Cloud Nine. So if anything wants to come at me. Uh, you know, trying to if, if I come across any rain teams or any sun teams or anything like that, I can always know that I can bring Licky Licky to to stop the weather effects as long as Licky's on the field. And, uh, that, and that's a good take because uh, the only other Cloud Nine users people recognized was uh, Drampa and Golduck. No one ever thought of Licky Licky. <laughs> I know, right? It's three very strange Pokemon. It's like Pokemon that you wouldn't normally think in terms of like competitive Pokemon. Um, but they're really great counters to weather, and that's what's so fun about Draft League is that uh, Pokemon that don't usually get to shine uh, really get to be used because you're you're forced to have lower tier Pokemon on your team, um, and that's what's yeah it's it's very exciting that like Licky Licky could play like a very pivotal role on my team, uh, just like I mean I grabbed like Graplocked mm-hmm. truly just because I was looking at my team and I was like oh man you know what like. Dragapult's kind of the only one that's, like, from this new gen. And I still needed a Tier 5 pick, and I was like, I have a shiny Graplocked. I'm just going to grab Graplocked. I don't have a fighting type yet. Like, let's, like, show them off on the uh, on the Wi-Fi battles. Yeah, that's uh, going to be fun. It'll, yeah, it was, it's exciting. Yeah, we actually had someone pick up a Tier 5 Blossom, and he Quiver Dance Sweep, like, his first three opponents. That's exactly like what can happen in draft league. You can like now it's like it's funny because um, Blossom's not a Pokemon you're gonna bring every week, right? Oh, yeah. Even if it does do the Quiver Dance thing, like like typically if a lower tier Pokemon is a threat to sweep, um, 
you're only going to get to surprise one coach with it, and then everybody else is going to see it, and they might be a little more prepared for it than that first person was. Yeah. Um, but it's really nice for like one, a one-time like surprise. Uh, and I have a couple of strategies like that that I'm going to see if I can't pull off at some point this season. All right. Well, that leads us to our next question here. Which Pokemon that you drafted do you think will impact your season the most? Um, that's interesting. I think, huh, it's weird. I've never done a draft league with Dynamax before. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see. I mean, I think, I think Klefki's so nice defensively. Klefki gets like priority screens up. It has defog. Uh, Klefki's really, really nice. It's going to be hard for me not to say... Klefki, just in terms of its ability to support my team and do like different things every week. Um, however, I will say that there's something about Araquanid getting sticky webs mm-hmm. is really, really important. And I think that it's going to help uh, Pokemon on my team like Crocodile um, and you know Rotom. People, Pokemon that typically aren't the fastest Pokemon but can hit really hard. Uh, obviously, having sticky webs up is super helpful, and also Araquanid itself. You know, if it gets set, like it hits hard with Water Bubble as its ability. So, getting up sticky webs, I think, I think, I think Araquanid is going to impact more than uh, more than it initially looks like it will. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also wouldn't be surprised if I bring Klefki, you know, almost every single week. And uh, the thing with Dynamax too is like Salazzle suddenly has, like, if I were to Dynamax Salazzle, go for some max oozes, like, pick up some KOs, then all of a sudden, Salazzle could be sitting at, like, plus two. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it, it's so fast. And so, I don't know. I don't know. It's hard to say. Um, I think that, like, the sleeper picks are going to be, like, an Araquanid or a Klefki. But I also wouldn't be surprised if Dragapult just, like, <laughs> helps me sweep up every team. Uh, in every, in any game, any given game, Dragapult could come in and have the right moves to to finish up the game. You know. Yeah. Well, that's very interesting that you chose some more defensive minds. You're only the second coach who's done that. Mm. But most coaches uh, like to claim their offensive uh, Pokemon as their most impactful Pokemon of the season. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the thing is, is like. Dynamax is only good for three turns, Mm -hmm. you know? That's how I see it. And so how I battle, it's definitely, um, especially like in singles, in a a format where Dynamax is allowed in singles, to me it's way more important to like live out your opponent's Dynamax and to stall them from being able to sweep off of their Dynamax. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I value more defensive strategies in that way because if I can stop them from them getting to sweep with their Dynamax, I'm confident that my team will be able to finish out the battle uh, as long as I'm able to keep those key Pokemon around. Literally, the key Pokemon around, by the way. <laughs> very true. Pun intended. Yeah. Pun, pun very... Well, I, I can't say that I intended it, but oh, now true. it's intended. Pun intended now. <laughs> and uh, this also brings me to a question I'm having personally. Um... You do, and you don't have to answer because it might give away some of the stuff you plan on doing for your team. So you're not, uh, it's not mandatory to answer this question. But okay, I do notice uh, you only have two defoggers in Rotom and Scyther. Uh-huh. So my question is, do you plan on bringing Scyther more as an offensive Pokemon with Eviolite, Swords Dance, or are you really looking for it as a defogger? Is that what you drafted it for? Was the defog with heavy duty boots? Right. Well, I do. I do also have Klefki. Um, oh, Klefki gets Defog as well. Uh, I think it got it in the former generation, so I think I'm able to transfer it in with mm, Defog. Okay. Um, but uh, I, I have no problem answering that question purely because I don't know. I'm not sure which is <laughs> going to be more helpful to me. <laughs> uh, heavy duty boots is like. Here's the thing. Is like um, one of the best. Pokemon battlers in my previous draft league that I was in for three years. I mean, I was in the finals with the same against the same person in two of those three seasons, mm-hmm. uh, and he brought Scyther. He drafted Scyther in every single draft league, and I've never gotten it, but it's always proved to be a menace. It's so good, 
and it only got better with the ability to have heavy-duty boots. Um, so Scyther's really quick. It gets U-turn, and it gets defog. I would not be surprised to see me uh, bring heavy-duty boots sets mm-hmm. with Scyther. That said, uh, the threat of, like, a Violite with Swords Dance and now Dual Wing Beat, like, Scyther has even more toys than it had in the previous generation, and I think that it was always underrated as a Draft League Pokemon before this generation, and suddenly I think that it's, uh, I think it's going to be even better now. So I, I, I can say that I am planning on using Scyther a lot, I just don't know if it's going to be more used offensively or defensively yet. That might become a clear, you know, like three weeks in, if I bring it offensively every time, it's because something's working. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, and that brings us to our second to last question here. I'm not sure if you've looked at all the teams collectively that much mm-hmm. since you did the pickups, but um, what team do you think will be your biggest challenge this season? Ooh. Um, huh. Let me, I have it right here. I have the list pulled up. I wasn't able to see, uh, like collectively look at the teams, Mm -hmm. like who has what synergy, but I will say, I mean, even just looking right at the Los Angeles and Kings have Cinderace and Azumarill and Mandibut, like, and Milotic, like that person, I'm I'm literally just looking at the... Oh, okay, cool. So, I'm looking at his team immediately, and, like, that person to me looks like somebody who's, like, is very aware of, like, type coverages, and, like, I don't know, that looks like a really well-built team. Um, that's not to say, like, all these teams don't look scary. You know what team I'm not, ha- like, excited to go up against? Who? Is uh, the Umbrawlers, because, <laughs> like, they the they literally grabbed Corsola and Pukamuku as their Tier 1 and Tier 2 picks. And that just to me is like somebody who's unhinged. That person is just gonna has no problem just sitting there and like <laughs> stalling you out. <laughs> uh, well, he's more of a doubles player, so he's kind sure. of just giving singles a, a wing. Yeah, I mean, I I was I used to be a singles player. I'm definitely more of a doubles player now, so I'm kind of going back into it. But mm-hmm. from what I remember, when Sword and Shield dropped, I just know that uh, Galarian Corsola is a threat. And I think that in Tier 1, most people would think to grab, like like I did, like Dragapult or like Danny of the Nidokings grabbed Cinderace. Like this guy grabbed Galarian Corsola, which is like <laughs> a great pick, but also, you know, it's so, it's just like, it's evil. It's evil, <laughs> right? Like we can say that. Uh it, but it's very smart. Also, like I saw Izzy's team when she announced it uh, after, because she drafted like I did afterwards. Mm-hmm. Um, and her team is super fun. It's got so many Kanto Pokemon, so I'm a, I'm a big fan of that one. It's tough for me to say which team I think is uh, is the biggest threat. Um, they all they all look good, and there are things about each team that I'm not gonna pick up on right away. Yeah. Um, but they definitely. Uh, I don't know. It's gonna be fun. I'm, it's gonna be fun to see everybody's uh, uh, teams in action. I would. I would probably have a different answer for you in a couple of weeks, to be honest. <laughs> okay. Well, we will be doing another yeah. coaches interview mid season, so th- that oh, should sweet. be fun to see how everything changes over the course. But to leave the viewers off with the final question, I'm gonna ask you an off the wall question that you're not prepared for. It's not Pokemon related. If you had okay. one su- obscure superpower, not the traditional ones. But you know, just a random one. Oh, okay. What superpower would you choose? Well, um, for example, I chose to be able to summon my favorite foods whenever I wanted. Oh, dude, that's a good one. Jeez, that's a good one. Um, oh, uh, you know what? Uh, <laughs> yikes. Uh, uh, what would I want to? to do I think uh oh man this is such a good question I um, thank Stuart J Mills for this question <laughs> Who am I thinking? Stuart J Mills, he's one of the uh, analysts for the group. Oh cool. Okay. Uh that's awesome. I didn't know we even had analysts. That's yeah. Cool. Uh they'll be doing a a video about years in Izzy's team. Ooh, that's exciting. Uh, well, in that case, I better give them a good answer so they like me and they, <laughs> they rank me high. <laughs> uh, 
I would probably... Um, you know what I want to do? This is weird, but, like, I think I'd want to... This is, again, my immediate answer, and maybe it's because we've all been in quarantine, like, a ton. <laughs> I would want to be able to, like, change up my wardrobe. Um, kind of like your thing with food. Like, maybe I'd want to always have, like, the appropriate outfit for, like, how hot it is or, like, how cold it is. <laughs> this feels like a weird answer, but, like, uh, I don't know. I have so many clothes I don't wear, and, like, I'm realizing that in quarantine that I'm, like, I'm so tired of all my clothes, and it would be so nice to, like, refresh that. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. I'm not happy with that answer, but it is the answer I gave. So just um, be able to change your clothing <laughs> style whenever you want? Sure, yeah. I, again, <laughs> hit me at the hit me in the midpoint interview. I'm going to have a whole different answer for you. I'll be ready. <laughs> Alrighty. All right, man. Well, thank yeah. you for kicking it with me. And if you want to leave anything left with the viewers. Um, it's been a pleasure. Uh, I guess for the viewers, um, you know, I, go follow everybody. Follow all of the coaches. We're all going to have different styles of how we present our videos. Um, and uh, I'm definitely excited to, to put – I love Draft League because my whole thing with YouTube is that I, I love using Pokemon that nobody uses. Mm -hmm. um, that's why I made the I, draft league yeah. the way it is it's the coolest thing, it really is and um, like I recently did a Jigglypuff video I recently did a Turtonator video today I, I put out a rental code for an all sound based team, so there's like Xbloud and Toxtricity and como -Oh. uh, Like I really love using Pokemon that, that don't usually get the spotlight and that's why I love draft league so um, you know, if you feel like you also enjoy that then come over to the channel, like, say what's up. I, I respond to everybody who talks to me. Uh, sometimes uh, people offer for me to be in uh, draft leagues, and then I even do that. Uh, <laughs> that is what happened this time. And so, uh, yeah, I guess that's what I leave the viewers with. Come check out my content, uh, but also not to steal anybody else's thunder either because I feel like everybody's going to be putting out good stuff over the next couple of weeks. It's going to be really, really fun. Oh, yeah, man. Again, thank you very much for filling in. And Absolutely. That was Berm with your New York Licks. Thanks for having me, Joe. I appreciate it.